So today we're going to be talking about the Dark Glass Microtubes 900. Uh, now we're going to go to the vintage microtubes. That was the um, B3K, which is a more modern, subby, aggressive kind of thing. Uh, so now we're in the vintage. I'm just going to add some gain to the um, vintage uh, microtubes. The drive is about at noon. Pretty, pretty gnarly. to the um, B3K side for some uh, distortion. This is just the um, clean channel, which is just the preamp itself. Um, so gain is basically at noon, which sounds like a lot, but since it's bass, it's all um, it's all clean gain. So it yeah, there's no distortion at all.
which is, uh, this is the version 1. They came up with the version 2 in 2018. Um, so this is the version 1. The version 2 has, uh, instead of uh, knobs, it has uh, faders, which is kind of cool. Um, but this was the first um, amp they made. Um, they're more known for their pedals, which I have a few right here, but I didn't use them. I just used the amp for uh, the sake of this video. Um, it's, it's a great amp. Uh, it's a great bass amp. Uh, the actual preamp um, part is really clean. You can get some distortion from the preamp if you uh, crank the gain. Um, but I don't do that. I just keep the preamp clean and I use this, um, the, um, they call it the microtube engine, uh, to actually get some of the distortion, which is just um, one of their built-in pedals. Um, so it comes with two of their pedals built into it. The, um, the vintage microtubes, which is a more mid rangey kind of honky sound, uh, and then the B3K, which um, is, uh, I believe that's their most popular pedal. Um, it's just a modern bass sound. Uh, it's very subby, also a lot of top end, and the mids are kind of scooped, which is nice because it leaves, leaves room for um, all the guitars. Um, it has a passive and active switch. I have the active, obviously, because my bass is active. Uh, and you can turn the microtubes on and off. Um, because if you don't want that and you just want to use the preamp, that's totally cool too. Um, and then you can switch between the microtubes um, using this little switch. Red is the B3K, uh, and then blue is the vintage. Uh, there is one complaint I have about this, and it doesn't come with a foot switch. Am I going to bitch about it? Yes! This is a $900 amp, and I believe the new ones are like a grand. You can't throw in a foot switch? Come on! Stop cheaping out! It's bullshit. Um, other than that, it's nice. Uh, it's, it's honestly, it's one of the best amps out there, uh, bass-wise. Um, and then there's a blend. You can blend in the, um, the microtubes into the preamp. Um, I kind of leave it 75%. Um, uh, you could just go 100% and then have the microtubes completely go into the preamp. I've done that. It works great. Um, a lot of people say don't do that uh, because uh, you will lose low end. But in my experience, that doesn't that doesn't really happen. Um, but yeah, I just leave it at 75%. The gain, it's not a traditional gain. Uh, uh, the gain knob, it's not a traditional gain knob, like on a guitar amp where you can actually crank it and open up a valve and get some distortion. You can do that, but you have to have it dined. Um, this is pretty clean. It just literally adds gain to the signal without any clipping. Um, and that's very good for bass because you need a lot of energy create those low notes and you don't really want that you don't want that type of distortion so then going into the EQ section there's a bass um, there's a bass knob which just boost or cut the bass uh, and then there's these two um, kind of semi parametric EQs for the the mid range there's a low mid which has a 500 uh, 1k and then a 250 um, and that's the low mids, uh, and they're actually very smart on choosing those certain frequencies. Around 500, you sometimes want to take that out. Um, 1K, that, that'll add a lot of uh, definition to the bass. Uh, that's where a lot of the oomph um, comes from. It's kind of got some top end in there. Um, and then the 250, that's getting towards low end. Um, and then on the high mid, there is uh, 1.5, which is sounds similar to the 1K, but it is very different. Um, there's just a lot more top end, uh, which I, I actually like a lot of top end in my bass signal. Uh, and then there's uh, 3K, which is getting towards treble. Um, I typically boost um, 3K when I have, like, uh, really gained out uh, guitars that helps them cut. Uh, I don't typically use that for bass, but I guess you could. Uh, and then the 750, um, that's more of your kind of stereotypical mid-range, a kind of honky sound. 
Uh, I don't use a ton of that towards bass playing. And then there's a treble knob. I don't exactly know what frequency. I believe it's 12k that the treble knob is set to, and I believe the bass knob is uh, 60. I believe. Uh, and then the master, which you do, you do not want to crank this all the way. This is 900 watts. Um, it's it's one of the best bass amps out there. Um, I will say it is a bit pricey. But you do get what you pay for. And uh, if you're looking for a more affordable option, uh, the pedals. Uh, like I have the B3K. Uh, I don't have a vintage. I should probably get that. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely just use the pedals. They have the exact same layout. Uh, there's even a uh, DI out and a cab sim on the pedals. So if you are a little weary about the price, I would look at the pedals. Their pedals are kind of pricey. Uh, I believe I got the B3K for 300, 300, 350, I don't really remember. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. It's a great amp. Uh, if you have the means, obviously go ahead and get it. Uh, if you can't, I would check out their pedals. Uh, and I believe they also make plugins. So if you're really desperate, um, I would check out the plugins. I forget who makes them. Uh, Dark Glasses make them, they kind of contract that out. Uh, but yeah, I would check those out too. Uh, the signal today was my Sterling um, Stingray, beautiful Sterling Stingray, active, 9 volt preamp, maple board, lovely bass. Uh, going into the amp, and, uh, and then that was going into an Ashdown Evo cabinet, which is loaded with their um, blue speakers. Uh, it's 4.8, um, I don't know the name of the speaker exactly, but that's one of my favorite cabs. Um, and then they're being mic'd with a uh, Audix D6, the kick drum mic, that's handling most of the low end. Uh, and then all the top end and mid range is being picked up by an Aston Origins. See you guys later!